Hi, I'm uh, Rob Jemison from AMD. Um, I'm just going to go through some technologies and some ways of tuning systems to make it work faster. And a lot of this stuff is um, what we don't do and what we should do. In other words, a lot of systems I see, um, I've actively involved with um, looking at uh, problem systems in my previous role, and it's amazing how many simple things that were cleaned up would make a massive difference in how people use computers and CAD. The first thing is that um, I accept we no responsibility. If you do any of this stuff, most of the stuff in here is quite soft. I'm not saying you're going to delete anything, but in reality, it's your own. If you do anything, it's down to you, okay? So I can't take responsibility. But um, if I had, if I checked that with my um, legal, I'd probably have like 10 pages of things I'd have to go through. So um, I'm sure you understand. Um, first thing is, we all use a web browser. And what do we do on a computer? We use a web browser. Even if we're using CAD, SolidWorks, Inventor, whatever, we always use a web browser. And that's one of the biggest drains of performance of a lot of modern computers. And people go, what? It's just a web browser. No, it uses lots of memory and it's full of um, uh, little programs that are run. And it's amazing how much sapping resource. You look, at a, you look at a PC, you know, I've had systems where I've had, you know, 10 gigabytes of memory used for, for, for Google, you know what I mean? And all the, you know, Chrome and stuff sitting on there. So one of the first things to do is to clean it out. You'll find there's loads of little cookies and stuff inside that. Most of them have a way of cleaning that stuff out. What I'm trying to do here is give performance for you to design something, not for you to, to give information to other people. You know what I mean? So the first thing is to have a good clean out. I was just looking, I was actually building this deck and looked and I was using four gigabytes of memory for, for I only had like four things open in, in, in Chrome. So it's amazing how much it can burn away. So give it a good clean and monthly. Um, there is a sort of a, a kill routine for this. It's thing called um, Malwarebytes and that will take, that will rip everything out of your computer. It is a bit more serious, and sometimes it might take something you're used to, and sometimes it has this thing about taking all your passwords away and everything, so just use it with, with respect. But I find this takes out a lot of stuff that you don't need. And I'm more for having, I don't like computers that take ages to boot up and take ages to work on. So this sort of stuff, it's a free bit of software for, per, for personal use, and it will just clean out a lot of stuff you don't realize. And the fact it lists 36 things or 108, 120 things, that shows you all that stuff was slowing you down. It's the first two basic things. Um, the other thing I find is that actually storage units are a lot faster if they're like half empty. And we all understand hard disks because they were spinning and the outer part of the disk was faster. But even, uh, even modern solid state storage, if you're um, putting lots of files down, small files, if you think about it, they're all in different pockets. It doesn't automatically clean that up. So if you've got lots of files, so if you spread one file over loads and loads of little pockets, it takes longer for it to actually search and place the data in. So the simplest thing is to keep your drive half empty. How many people work locally or how many people work on a network? So do you copy your files locally on your system? Who's, who's, who's local? Okay, that's generally faster. Who works on a network? Now, I understand that you have to work on a network, especially if you have a cloud, if you have a, a vault system or something, what else. But sometimes when you've got larger models, it's better to copy the data locally, work on it, and put the stuff back up. Now, that might upset, you know, if, you've, if you're in a workflow system or whatever, but you'll find local storage is faster. And it's when you get to larger data sets, that's when it's worth putting stuff locally. This is a, an application called Duplicate File Finder. Now, this just goes through the hard disk and just cleans out some, some of the areas. You know, I ran this and I found five gigabytes of stuff I didn't really need anymore. It's amazing how many copies you've downloaded the same stuff. A classic one is um, SolidWorks Surface Packs, for example, that has massive files and you've downloaded a couple of times. And that's a good thing to get rid of. You know, you don't need that and that will cleans out your hard disk. It makes it go faster. Very simple stuff. Um, the other thing I like to do is to check what's running. Now, my IT loves to give me these wonderful programs that are meant to do these search routines and stuff, and I have no idea what's going on half the time. So, um, obviously, there's Process Explorer you can download from Windows 10. Actually, Windows 11 is a lot better. And I used to look at what's going on on my, on my actual um, PC. And this tells me what applications are running. Now, a classic example is a lot of IT um, people will put a load of um, uh, software on so they can, you know, in case you use it for something else. You don't need it half the time. You know, I don't want accounting software on my system. I don't want it to start up every time and tell me I need to, I could run in and log into the accounting system. How do you get rid of it? Well, startup, you can go in Task Manager and you can just um, sit startup, or you can just type startup in the, the tree, and you can see all the different things that's turned on. Classic example is I've been playing with SolidWorks and Autodesk. I don't use Inventor anymore. So why have I got Autodesk Application Manager started? Don't need it. So best thing is to uninstall it, to be honest. But if it's there, you can just disable it. Because that takes memory. What's that do when its system starts up? Yeah, I'm going to go and check with um, 
um, you know, with Autodesk to see, oh look, he's doing this, and I'm going to take some, I'm going to take some resource. It all takes time. It all wastes money. It all wastes your time on doing something. So I'm going to look at some of the tuning on the graphics side of things now, and it's very important. SolidWorks, Inventor, uh, rendering applications, they're using the GPU to do things. So actually setting the GPU up correctly makes a big difference to your performance because that's what you see all the time. We all, how many people have 4K monitors now? Who's on 4K? Yeah, you are using the graphics card more to actually have 4K. So you need to have everything set up properly. So in the, the fastest mode inside SolidWorks is, um, uh, is, is basically shady with edges. So that's just a normal mode. And actually, people think, oh, why well, frames faster? It's not. It's actually slower than, say, shady with edges, because you're actually culling stuff in the background. If you're modeling something big, obviously having that mode is, is a typical mode is the fastest. So there is a certification process with SolidWorks where we send basically cards, we send cards and drivers to them and they test it. And it's just like, well, what's that? Is that important? Yes, it is important because that's how the software is set up. So if you have a certified card and you have a certified driver, then it enables certain features. It not just enables real view, it actually gives you more performance because there's two rendering modes inside SolidWorks. So if you don't have that, you'll have a, you'll have a slower rendering mode. So first off, there is, once you've downloaded it, what happens is ourselves, NVIDIA, and Intel launch new cards afterwards. So you could buy a version of you know, SolidWorks 2020, and then two months later, we, down, we give a, a new card out. So if you go to the website, there's, a, there's actually a, a little patch. And what this patch does, it installs the, the relevancy of the new version of the, of the card. So that will then add that card to the list to say, this card is now listed, now it will be supported. So how many people have patched their graphics cards in SolidWorks? No, you see, and that's the first thing. That will make a difference in performance. It's just as a web page, hardware certification, download the patch, and then the graphics card will be understood by SolidWorks. That's one of the first things you should always do. Um, but it's not always perfect, and that's because things are new. So the laptop, which I was going to present on, we wouldn't have that problem, um, is um, a, a Lenovo uh, laptop. It's brand spanking new. They've done the certification, but the actual driver is incorrect. They've got the wrong driver on. That's fine. Everybody makes mistakes. Everybody puts a driver. It's a brand new bit of technology. So sometimes it's worth checking because the information is good, but sometimes when the stuff is new, we all make mistakes. So one of the features of um, certified cards and, and, and stuff is to have OIT, order independent transparency. That's the translucent stuff. And that was implemented in uh, 2014. And how many people use that? Do you know about it? Okay, so that basically means when you look through something, you see things in the correct depth and it calls it correctly. Um, SolidWorks added it into the view, so when you actually click on, a, on parts, you can actually see translucently before you actually enable it. And later on, they added it in for constraining. Now I know most of you use that when you constrain something. When things go translucent, you can't see it. When you're constraining something in SolidWorks, for example, that is a very fast feature because it makes you, you can pick things inside. You don't even know you're using it because it's part of SolidWorks. But that's actually a graphics feature. That needs memory. And if, and if, the, if the card is not configured properly, you don't have enough memory, you won't get, that will actually start to like flicker. You have this like flickering sensation, and that's actually slowing it down because it's not working properly. So how do you make sure that that is actually stored properly? So, and there was, this is an example of a customer who's using transparency, and obviously he designs cars, pallet off, and obviously looking through the car is important. He's got lots and lots of details inside it. So translucent parts is really important. So, and another thing that's added to a, a professional card is you get the ability to use real view. How many people use real view inside SolidWorks? One. So nobody likes <laughs> real view. Real view is, is useful because it actually applies materials, it provides um, the lighting stuff. I was working in, in a previous role, I was working for a company who was one of the first robotic lawnmowers. And they did this and they said, look, look, we put the switch on the side. And then they actually switched on real view, and they realized it was dark at the side. So people will actually end up lifting up a lawnmower to switch it off. It's not good, because, because it's dark, you don't see it. So using things like real view actually gives you the idea of light. I'm not saying it's the same lighting system and stuff that we've just seen in the previous presentation, but it's useful to see where light is cast on things. And it's, it's it built in, it's free. You know, it's a useful tool to have. A lot of people can't use real view, or they switch up, they have a large assembly, and they say, well, real view is not enabled to me. A little icon appears, which, show, which is shown in real view. And this is because there's a, especially in older versions, there's, a, there's a, a limit. So real view will switch off if it sees more than 500 components. 
If you use lightweight mode, so it'll just switch on to lightweight mode. If you go onto lightweight mode and switch it off, then it will actually load for 500 parts. How many people use more than 500 parts in their assemblies? Yes, it's quite a few. Do you, use, you don't use RealView either. Now, RealView actually offers extra, even if it's not enabled, i.e. in the viewport, actually having RealView on can actually give you things inside the viewport. The large modeling mode ha can help, for example. So the other thing is, is there, how many people use Visualize? Ooh, that's interesting. <laughs> Use visualize. Visualize, does this visualize come with your packages anyway? Anybody inside the works users? Do you have visualize anyway? No? Yeah, there's a few. Yeah, Visualize comes with it in the pro version of SolidWorks. Um, it's, a, it's a great way to visualize stuff. AMD cars are supported, which is important, so you can actually render stuff with Visualize now. Um, and it uses the GPU, so it uses memory. Because the key thing for Visualize, you need to have at least eight gigabytes of memory on it to actually use Visualize properly. It needs to actually cache the data. Going back to the example I had earlier of that, that laptop, there is um, um, a pro driver, which we've just launched, and this basically the pro drivers, anybody's got an AMD card, if you download this driver, this will give you a boost of performance. In these examples, you know, 150% over what, 100, over 100%, 50% extra performance. Why? It's because we've re-engineered the actual um, driver. And that's not just like any driver, we've actually completely taken it apart and rebuilt it for, new, for modern hardware. And it makes a big difference. So if you're doing a drawing view inside SolidWorks, the tests that I did, it was 50% faster from one driver to the next. Now, 2D drawing views take time. 50% faster is a, big, is a big change. It's just a driver. The thing is, you have to download this. I'm well, never going to do it. 22.Q3 is a simple thing. So anybody using AMD hardware and has got one of these cards, 22.Q3 will give a boost in performance because we've re-engineered the driver. Sometimes you need to set up the hardware to make sure it's going to appear for that. So, um, and why was the, I'll, I'll talk about that in a second. There was a jump in performance because we re-architectured it, but also any Inventor users here, for example? Okay, so Inventor, um, we actually improved the DX version of the driver last time. So um, if, you look at the, if you look at the Inventor website, it might state that you can use an older driver when it first launched. Actually downloading the newer driver will give you a bump in performance. It might not be 5%, but 5% for nothing is not bad, is it? And this is mirrored on, on NVIDIA. NVIDIA's updated their drivers as well. This will give you more performance as well. Key thing is, it's better to uninstall the existing driver before you put the new driver on. Some, a mistake a lot of people make is not to install the existing driver. A lot of them say they automatically do it, but I always uninstall the existing driver. It's a lot safer. So in SolidWorks, there is a bit of an issue that if, um, if if SOLIDWORKS looks at the system and doesn't find the correct amount of memory, it then switches to a slow rendering mode. This is quite common. Um, it happened with the laptop we were playing with. Basically because um, there's an option inside um, uh, the actual laptop to set auto mode. An auto mode is saying that I will automatically give you more memory inside a laptop if it's available. And that's a Windows thing. The trouble is SOLIDWORKS being OpenGL doesn't understand that, so it's asking a question to say how much memory you've got on the graphics card. It sees one gigabyte as the default, and then doesn't actually load the fast rendering mode, so you get slow rendering mode. Okay. So the simple fix to do that is to go into the BIOS, just hit escape key, and actually specify in this, in what Lenovo speak is um, frame buffer size to 8G, which is eight gigabyte. This happens on Intel. This will happen potentially with, with a frame buffer setting for, for NVIDIA cards. Has to be set first, especially apparent in Windows 11 as well, because a lot of it's automatically set inside. By setting that up, then, the, then SolidWorks knows it's got the amount of memory, and then will start properly. And the performance level will, hap, will, will give you a massive boost. It's very simple, but it's surprising how many systems run into this problem. Um, Again, I was talking about uh, uh, DirectX. Obviously, um, Inventor has is, is actually added a ray tracing, GPU ray tracing, inside their latest version of, uh, of SolidWorks. You need a recent card, i.e. from us, from us uh, last generation, or um, from NVIDIA from two generations. Again, to get the DX boost, you need a later driver. And that's probably later. When, when Autodesk launched the software, that was the driver that was current then. They don't do intermediate testing. When they launch the software, they do, they do test once. So with Inventor, you generally want to use a later driver than what they specify because they only test once. That's just how Autodesk work. Um, but obviously, ray tracing built into the viewport is good because obviously you want to see things. You know, we're looking at lighting and, and especially that's all built into the software, so you might as well use it. 
So what's happening with SOLIDWORKS? Well, we did a project with them about Vulkan. Vulkan is a new graphics engine. And why? What's Vulkan? Vulkan is a, a, a step up from OpenGL, and it gives more performance, and it means that you can see things, you can do shading and lighting effects. And the reason is, this is um, uh, Vulkan and DX. This is how many lines of stuff you can draw, how many times you can send something to the screen. And this is basically DirectX 11, and this would be OpenGL 4.5, with the same sort of thing. That's how much more performance you get out of Vulkan Engine. And so, uh, at the moment, I, don't know what, I can't say anything states on the project, but this will be added quite soon. This is really important. But having Vulkan added to the graphics cards and stuff, that will give a lot more performance to, to SOLIDWORKS and to do shading effects. And I think that's what we all want to see. A lot of you aren't using real view. It means you can have things looking real all the time in the viewport without having to actually you know, take, take compromises with performance. It also means you can load more data sets bigger. How many people have large data sets? How many more than 1,000 components? OK, one, one, one or two of you. So it, it is important because sometimes if you have a very complex data with a lot of materials and you have large data sets, then that will slow the graphics card down all the time. That will slow the performance down of everything. Any, um, AMD, we've been pushing, as everybody hopefully knows that we've, we're very good on the CPU side of stuff, we've got a lot of new technology. Um, there is a bunch of cards on our, on our stand and we're giving one away There's a, as a thing there's a, to drop a card in into a box. I'm afraid I couldn't bring it here because then I'd be having it on our stand. If you type it in, there's a chance to win a graphics card. I also have some basic visualisation guide. Just say 2020, things haven't changed that much since 20... Nothing's happened in the last two years, has it, really? Come on, be honest, you know. So just stayed at home and watched a lot of Netflix. Um, so there is a guide there if you want to go through that sort of stuff. And everybody's saying great stuff. I'm not going to go into that in particular. I'm running out of time. So... Um, um, anybody uses lots of analysis software? Yeah, a few people. So the <laughs> it's quite, there's a few, there's a few that say yes, and they're really mm, not so sure. Um, thread rippers, um, we have lots of up to 64 core uh, thread ripper systems. They're very fast. It's definitely worth looking at. Um, CamWorks and several other applications now are starting to use multi-threading. Anybody likes waiting for this stuff? No. So having multiple threads is a lot faster to do things. Lots of customers saying nice things about that. Um, um, mobile processors. So I do think now things are changing again on laptops. How many people use laptops compared to that? How many laptop people? Wow, it's a massive amount of laptop people. So there is... We make a thing called an APU, which is a GPU and CPU combined. Everybody's always thought that they are slower than having a separate discrete graphics card and a laptop. Things have changed. So everybody's heard of a PlayStation and an Xbox. That's got an APU, and that's a very fast graphics ability. So Lenovo have um, a P14S and a P16S, and they both have an APU inside. And that, the performance level of the, of the, the graphics is equivalent to a middle, a middle range uh, discrete graphics card. Well, uh, you know, that's good. But that's, that's a light laptop. There's one on the stand, there's one on each stand. They're small and light. You know, we all don't like to have a heavy, heavy laptops. They last 12 hours on a battery. Because if you've got a combined CPU, GPU, if you're doing something in graphics, you, you put the power to the, for the GPU. If you're doing something on CPU, you do, and it's all the same heating thing, it's, it uses a lot less power. That's why the battery lasts so much longer. And, they've, and the fact is Lenovo's come out with this and other manufacturers are coming out with these that proves that the technology's moved on. Because competition is good. Competition means that things, that you can buy things cheaper. Anyway, I, I'd say we're on the stand there. Um, so keep it clean, remove all the stuff that you've gunk you've got inside. Um, make sure you don't have little pop-ups that tell you you're gonna shut down in half an hour. Um, get the right hardware, single threaded, then you want a high clock speed. GPUs have enough memory. You know, there's a four gigabyte or more limit on SOLIDWORKS to get the fast mode. If you don't have four gigabytes, you've got no chance. So make sure that's a minimum requirement. Threading app, if you've got lots of threaded applications, then obviously um, Threadripper Pro. Um, the GPU, configure it properly. Make sure it's configured inside. Get the latest driver. That is it, really. Thank you. Got a question yes, of course. Um, laptops that have dual graphics cards. Yes. So sometimes um, you'll find that people are using the wrong one. They use the yep. wrong power graphics card. So usually you have to go into the settings. Uh, usually into gaming, I think in Windows 10 11, where you have to actually say I want to use the high power yep. graphics card. Is there a way for um, the drivers to automatically pick these things up on applications so that you so, automatically start with high power? So, so um, SolidWorks, there is. Again, the certification. So on some of the specialists, on, 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 an Intel, on an Intel workstation, for example, you might have a, an ATR or an NVIDIA card. Having the right driver, you need to sort of 
you have to put the Intel driver on first, and then put the NVIDIA driver on and make sure it's certified. Then SOLIDWORKS will pick up the correct one if it sees the right driver. Right. Okay. It, is, it, is, it, isn't, it isn't just like put one on, you have to put both on. And then in the BIOS, you have to say, this is, this is the, um, I'm booting at my primary, sometimes you have to say the primary graphics card is the, is the actual discrete graphics card. Yeah. Did that go to SolidWorks go through a certification process with you to put that up as well? No, it, it should automatically pick it up. If it's certified, and you'll see, actually, there's a setting inside where it actually tells you which card is actually there, it, it'll come up with the right card inside. But you have to have the right drivers. Sometimes, and Windows has this lovely topic of doing a Windows update where you don't want it to, and that actually wipes out graphics drivers. So in other words, you know, um, my wife had a, you know, well, I can't touch my screen properly. It's not working properly. Basically, Windows have put a new driver on. Even though those are properly good in driver so, so you sometimes have to reinstall it because Windows service packs say, oh, I wanted to clean it all off and put a, I'll put the native driver in. So you do have to keep on top of the drivers and there's nothing going to change in the short term, I'm afraid. And I'll be on the stand. I know the next presentation should be starting, so I'll be on the stand. I, I've got a lot more depth, but I don't want to bore everybody with, you know, to, to death, okay? So, all right. Thank you for your time. Thanks.